Welcome back to another brand new episode of E on the Mic. I'm your host, E, and today we're going to be talking about our top 10 tight ends coming into 2022. Now, that's going to be interesting here. Here we go. We're going to start off with our tight ends today. So, without further ado, let's always go talk about our honorable mentions. Talk about one of our honorable mentions here today is Dawson Knox from the Buffalo Bills tight end. He last year, 587 receiving yards with four touchdowns. Now, he's been an improved player, definitely great in the blocking scheme and the receiving game there. As you can see, he is popping off right now for the Buffalo Bills. I think he's going to be great, especially for the Bills moving forward, especially having a lot of weapons there for the from the wide receiver core to the tight ends to help Josh Allen in that offense there. Dawson Knox, wouldn't be surprised he gets in the top 10 or if he's even right there, but I have him right now as my honorable mentions as of right now for Dawson Knox. Excuse me, add the number 12 spot. Now, this one here, this is another honorable mentions. And I feel bad for even having him in my honorable mentions, but I just really do, even though he revived his career a little bit in Arizona Cardinals, and I am talking about Zach Ertz. Yes, Zach Ertz. Even though he's popped off ever since he got traded from Philadelphia, he has totaled in 783 receiving yards last year, plus the six tutties last year, which, man, oh, man, he's revived himself there. And he's going to be fed a lot, especially this year, 2022. You got to look at it. DeAndre Hopkins got, is suspended for six games. Hollywood Brown, you don't know how long he's going to be suspended for. So this is great opportunity for him. And Zachary definitely is that been great. Going to help James Conner, especially in that run game, giving the, the ability to block for James Conner there. That's going to be, be the main key right there to help to be successful for Arizona right there, especially when you still have Zach Ertz. Even though he's not as particular in his prime, but he's reviving his prime back there, so he might bring a spark there for Arizona this year. But I still do have him right now as my aura mentions. And at number 10 spot on our list, it is Pat Paramoth who last year had 497 receiving yards last year and seven touchdowns last year. Now, this man has been great with the Steelers, especially in Big Ben's last ride last year. He was definitely targeted, especially right in the red zone, definitely great in the, in the run block scheme, especially helping Najee Harris and that offensive line that still needs a little bit of help with that offensive line there, but gives some great blocking ability for Najee Harris to succeed this year. Pair- Pat Fairmouth has been more of a blocking tight end, but definitely great in the red zone there. Just cracking right there at number 10. I thought of, it came back and forth between Pat and Zach Ertz near the end there, but I do feel in the end, Pat deserves a number 10 spot right there. Now, I wouldn't be shocked if I see Zach Ertz up there if he has the same same success from last year, that little spark that he got, especially after getting traded from Philadelphia to the Cardinals. If he gets that spark there, getting that – getting that bounce back right there, especially will be targeted more, especially with, with weapons down in Arizona. Will not be surprised by that at all. But as of right now, I do have Pat from the Steelers, who's still going to be fighting for some targets there from George Pickens, Claypool, and Deontay Johnson. So it's going to be very interesting there, but he's going to be very valuable in the run block scheme for the Steelers to succeed in the run game. So I got a number 10 on my list. Going to our number 9 on our list is TJ Hawkinson. Yes, I have TJ Hawkinson there going for 587 receiving yards last year. Had a down year, especially everyone had him really high last year going at number, at number 5. And I was in one of those trains where I had him at the top 5 last year. Now I have him right there at number 9, you know. Wasn't expecting that type of season there. He had some injuries there and there then, but... Just never live up to the to the hype, the moment, especially at being the number five for the top top five tight ends in the league, especially. Now he's still great, brings a great valuable in the block game. Still a little bit disappointing in the receiving game. We thought this this last year was gonna be the year where he spikes up to a thousand receiving yards, but instead he is a right at five eighty seven. Yes, injuries did came a part of his deal there. He still got Jared Goff there. You look at the weapons around him right now. Same Browns, DeAndre Swift, Williams, when he comes back healthy, will he get the same targets as he did two years back when he had Matthew Stafford with Jared Goff this season? We'll see. But as of right now, 
I do like DJ Hawkinson at number nine. And number eight on my list right now. Now, this is going to be a shocker one right here. Now, a lot of people expect expect this guy to be maybe top six, top seven. I got a number eight, and that is Mike Gizeki. Yes, I have Mike Gizeki at number eight. Yes, I'm a Dawes fan, but that don't mean nothing. I have him at number eight on my list here. Great receiver, great receiving tight end. No questions about it. Set, getting over 700 receiving yards last year. Getting a total of two touchdowns last year. Wasn't too much target in the red zone as I thought thought he would, especially especially the offense that we ran last year for Miami. Especially the tight ends were getting left and right for a nice tutties right there, left and right for for the picking there. But as of right now, Jacecki is not a great blocker right now. There has been rumors right now where he's be talking about in trade talks right now to Green Bay, to the Bears, to a lot of teams, right, or even to Cleveland. Maybe he's even sometimes even Dallas at this point in time. But I do like my Jacecki there. He's still a phenomenal tight end. No questions about it. He's great. He's almost going on. He's going to finish up his contract pretty soon for Miami. So it's going to be interesting where he will go if he stays with Miami or he doesn't stay with Miami. But I do like my Jacecki at number eight there. I feel he needs to have a great season to show if he can be right at number f- top five on this list here. But as of right now, I have my Jacecki at number eight. At number seven on this list, Dalton Schultz, that's right, the Dallas Cowboy tight end, Dalton Schultz, where he went last year, 808 receiving yards last year, eight touchdowns last year as well. Having a phenomenal year there, becoming a great blocking tight end for the Dallas Cowboys, especially in that run game to help Zeke and Pollard in that run game to help that offensive line as well, who's been a little bit banged up and trying to get recoup that Dallas uh, – running game that hasn't been been seen since whew, a few years back when they were fully healthy. The Dallas offensive line was fully excuse me healthy. Now you look at Dalton Schultz, great running great running tight end blocking, great receiving. He's finally appearing himself as a great receiving tight end as well, which you might love to hear if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, you will love to hear some Schultz improving this year. As well, maybe even cracking a thousand receiving yards this year, giving great blocking for Dallas Cowboys. That's what I got on right now at number seven. As we go to number six, and speaking of Dallas, how about we talk about Dallas Goddard? That's right, Dallas Goddard, the, the tight end, has been blooming for the Philadelphia Eagles since trading Zach Ertz away to the Arizona Cardinals. Dallas Goddard last year, going over 800 receiving yards, getting six. Tuddies in the making there for the Philadelphia Eagles right there. He's been a great tight, great blocking tight end and receiving tight end as well. You love to hear that, especially if you're a Philadelphia fan. Now you look at the weapons surrounding him right there. You got AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Watkins, Miles Sanders. You have a lot of weapons to, to even Jalen Rager, you know, to also look at. Main question is. I think he's still going to be the main guy there. Jalen Hurts really loves targeting him there. Now, he would be spreading the ball around, but he, last year, if you notice, he loves spreading around between Smith and Goddard, especially in that offense there. I wouldn't be surprised if I see him cracking 1,000 receiving yards. And I have him right at number six, almost cracking at number five. I almost have him right there at number five, but I just have him right outside of number five currently. But I do have him at number six on this list going through our top fives now we go look at kyle pitts that's right kyle pitts the rookie from last year going 1026 receiving yards but only going for one touchdown that came from the london game now he's been a great receiving tight end no question about it just needs a little bit of work more on the blocking game i think he just needs to improve on that a little bit more to earn improve, especially as a number five tight end. It was really close between Goddard and and Kyle Pitts there, but I do, especially especially Kyle Pitts last year, getting 1,026 receiving yards. I think he could be blossoming. Now it's going to be a different quarterback now, from Matt Ryan to Marcus Mariota. But I do feel Marcus Mariota will feed, will feed in to Kyle Pitts there. You never know if Desmond Ritter, 
does come and play. You never know if they do switch quarterbacks and see how Desmond does in that year. That will be an interesting moment there. But I do expect Kyle Pitts to get, once again, either close or right at 1,000 receiving yards and get more tutties this year to help solidify his case to being at number five once more. And that's why I got Kyle Pitts at number five. At number four, this is Darren Waller from the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, they got six now last year he got 665 receiving yards. Going low this year too with two touchdowns there. He has some injury injuries from last from this year alone. That's why he was very limited to the receiving yards that he has currently right now. Last year he was phenomenal last the previous year, excuse me. He was phenomenal the previous year going for a more than 800 receiving yards. Great tight end there for the Las Vegas Raiders. Great in the blocking scheme and the receiving game. The receiving game, he's dangerous. They have to put two people on him at, at points and times just to keep him secure so Derek Carr can throw at other receivers in that team, like Hunter Renfro, for example, or even Devontae Adams now this season. That's going to be interesting here. Hopefully you want to see a healthy Waller to succeed this NFL season, especially in 2022 NFL season for the Las Vegas Raiders, especially that division could be even tougher than it has been in the past few years. Besides the Kansas City Chiefs there, maybe you want to say the Chargers in there as well, or even the Broncos, but the Broncos still are in the works right now, and they could be in the playoff contention as well. So it's going to be interesting AFC West there, but I do have Darren Waller at the number four. Going to number three in this list. Now, I have Mark Andrews at number three in the, in the top three of the tight ends here. 1,361 receiving yards. This is his first, first ever 1,000 receiving yards in his, in his NFL career, going for nine touchdowns. Lamar Jackson's favorite target last year. He's going to have the same targets as last year there. No wide receivers really, maybe besides even Bateman there, you still got Dobbins you, is returning back from his ACL injury, knock on wood, just for him to stay healthy there. Now, I just feel Lamar Jackson will keep targeting Mark Andrews there to help him succeed more as and he's great also in the blocking game as well to help that, especially Baltimore is more in that run, run scheme more than passing, if you've noticed. But you got to love Mark Andrews there. He is also solidified as a, as a nice young tight end that's coming up. Wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing him more in the top top two in the next year or two right now. I have him right now on number three on my list. But Mark Andrews, watch out. Ooh, going down to the last two now on this list here. Now, this could be interesting here. Now, this is where the huge debate comes between these two tight ends right here. This is where it comes down to these two tight ends here. You hear about George Kittle and you hear about Travis Kelsey a lot. <clears throat> this is going to be interesting. If I, w- I wish it could be like a 1A, 1B type of thing there, but we do got to do our two and one. So number two on this list here will be George Kittle. Why do I say George Kittle at number two? Well, let's talk about the stats real quick. 910 receiving yards. He did get six tutties last year as well. He is all he is he's clearly defined as a tight end university type of tight end where he's great on the block, great in receiving game, especially the 49ers are a run game scheme team as well. He's phenomenal there. He just needs to stay healthy there. He's coming up into age there for George Kittle. He has some ish injury issues a little bit. That keeps me a little bit concerned there for George Kittle. If he stays healthy, he's definitely a clear number one on this list. No question about it right now. My concern is, can he stay healthy throughout the 2022 NFL season? That's going to be the main question to see. But I do expect him to still ball out this year for the San Francisco 49ers, even though they still got Debo Sam, Elijah Mitchell, and other players as well. Brandon Ayuk as well in this in that team there. Great all defined tight end there. Got to put respect for George Kittle there, but I do got him at number two. As we go to our number one on this list, as you guys may have known, it is Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey, 1,125 receiving yards, has gone back to back to back six times 1,000 receiving yards last year from the past six seasons already and getting nine 
tutties as well into making there. Travis Kelsey still still in his prime there, even though he's coming up into age there in his in his early thirties right now. I still feel he will ball out there more, especially this year. Look at their wide receiver core there. Juju Smith. You got Juju Smith. You got Sky Moore. You got Clyde with Hilaire. If you're still in the if you're still a competition there for getting some targets there as well. You gotta love we got Travis Kelsey there, especially and Mahomes combination, bro. Especially not gonna have too much targets, especially from Tyreek Hill, who moved to Miami as well. <clears throat> and Yes, he's a great receiving tight end. He's not too much great of a blocking tight end, I would say. You know, he's not like George Kittle, where George Kittle is all defined blocking tight end and receiving tight end in the NFL. I just, for as of right now, I really love Kelsey right now. He's he's been healthy right now. Receiving, receiving, he's going to keep on getting the same targets he's been getting from Mahomes. There's no difference there. And this, this is really close. Have Kittle stays healthy, I wouldn't be surprised if I see Kittle at number one. It can go either or, especially for those two right there, for Travis Kelsey and George Kittle there. That's going to do it for, for this episode there for the top 10 tight ends in the coming to the NFL 2022 NFL season. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know. We still got one more left in this series, and that will be the online. line. That will be next week to finalize this series. If you've been enjoying this series for 2022 NFL season, I appreciate you guys so much for certain, and we'll find more series coming after this. But until then, I want to say thank you guys for listening to this great episode, Top 10, Tight Ends. Until then, I will see you guys in the next episode. Until then, take care. Peace.